there's an interesting observation that I want to make you aware of regarding linear differential equations, specifically finding the integrating factor. There's uh, something that happens quite often that works out to our advantage, and a lot of times students don't even, don't even notice it. So um, here, here's a first order differential equation, and you'll recall if it's in this format, this is what we call standard form. This is called a, a linear differential equation. So we, we know that. Um, and then to solve these guys, one of the key parts uh, to solving a linear differential equation is finding this guy called the integrating factor. That's, this is what's known as the integrating factor. Now, at first glance, it looks like these uh, integrating factors will be really ugly because you have e raised to the integral of wh whatever p of x is, right? So what, whatever this guy is, that you raise e to the integral of, of that guy. And then we know how to proceed from there. We distribute this guy through both sides and that, that, that's all, all well and good, but that, that doesn't really have much to do with what I wanna talk about in this video. Um, let's, let's try an example and I'm gonna point out something regarding the integrating factor when, when you actually go about finding it. So here's a, a first order linear differential equation. You notice it kind of fits the, the template that it should. Uh, right here, this, this is our P of X right here. Okay, so let's let's find the integrating factor and let's let's see what this um, this observation is that that I was wanting to make. So the integrating factor, either u of x or in this case mu of x, as it's often written, would be e to the integral of three over x uh, dx. All right, so we can um, integrate this if we pull the three out. So the three is a constant can be pulled out, and just for time's sake, I think we can just go ahead and do this integral e raised to the 3 that we just pulled out and the integral of 1 over x would be natural log of x. So I think we, we're pretty comfortable with that. Now that looks horrendous. That looks really, really bad. Uh, I do see an e and a natural log that, that um, you know, that, that uh, looks good. I like having exponentials and logarithms because they often cancel. The 3, however, is keeping these guys from canceling at the moment. So a common trick that we do quite often is we will pull this guy up into the exponent and then the e and the natural I'll cancel and you'll get an x cubed, an x cubed um, out of this guy. Now here's, what, here's the observation I wanted to make. Look at the integrating factor at the end of the day. It didn't have an e in it. And in fact, this is quite common. Uh, if you look through the examples in your textbook, uh, you'll notice that a large percentage of these, I would estimate maybe upwards of 50% of these, the integral of the P function will give you a logarithm in anticipation of canceling with the E, right? We clearly could have had an integral that didn't have a logarithm and our integrating factor would be E to the integral of whatever, but, um, but the, you know, it's very nice that a lot of uh, so many of these integrals have logarithms in them so that the exponentials and logarithms cancel and then this is the guy you distribute both through both sides not somebody with e now does that have to happen absolutely not we we have plenty of examples where the the integrating factor is e to the 2x or e to the 5x or something like that and that's completely fine but i just wanted to make a, a just a quick observation that a lot of these work out to your benefit when the integrals have logarithms so just kind of be on the lookout for that 